the most sort of mainstream perspective that I had was unfortunately through the movie Blood Diamond. Mm. And I don't think that is a good reference at all, you guys. Period. Oh my god. But it's a good movie though. It's, it's a, a good great movie. movie. Yeah. yeah. But if you're moving to Sierra Leone, like that's not what you should be referencing. <laughs> right, 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 Please sure. Do not. What's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Joannis or Joe Hatagua. I'm a Sierra Leonean American living here in West Africa. I'm in Sierra Leone right now. We got a mukbang for you. Today, I am joined by two very special guests. One, Mariama Forbes. Hi. And I also have Tracy with us as well. Uh, Mariama, can you give a little bit about who you are and what you do? Hi, everybody. My name is Mariama Forbes, and I'm here in Sierra Leone reconnecting with my roots. You can follow me as well and follow me as I connect adventure through Sierra Cool, and I'll have all of that in the description, like all of the pages that you can find Mariama on. And Tracy, you are not a YouTuber, but you, you've you decided to grace us with your presence thanks to Mariama's coercion. Um, <laughs> so Tracy, can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing here? Hi guys, my name is Tracy Pauline Albert and I moved to Sierra Leone about eight months back okay. and I work in the education sector. Here. Nice, and you moved here from India? Yes, I moved here from India. Nice, so we're going to talk a little bit about the food. We're going to talk about what we ordered. There's a lot of food here so we can talk through what it is and what's in it. Some of the cultural differences between India, Sierra Leone, and then of course my American cultural background and of course Mariama's UK background. And then we're going to talk a little bit about how the food tastes. Maybe we'll have some conversations about the future of Sierra Leone and then we'll end it there. For me, the biggest difference between being here and being in the U.S. is the speed of which things move. You know, I feel like when you're in a tropical place, people move a little bit slower. There's a there's a different speed here. Mm -hmm. And so that was one thing I had to get used to. But as I mentioned before, black excellence, right? People in leadership roles are all people of color, right? Which is not something I saw at all in any of the previous roles that I've had. I've had a few people here and there. I actually worked with a guy who used to brag that he was the highest ranking black person at the company we worked at. And he was a director level, right? Where they had SVP, VP, C-level executives, and none of them were people of color. Until one point, we actually did have one woman who was the uh, chief communications officer or something of that nature. But yeah, so it, it just wasn't something I saw very often. And so being here, I think that's, it's a reminder of the fact that we have that talent that can be at those levels. It's just maybe those opportunities aren't provided to people in the West. I love being here for that reason because I see black excellence every day. Yeah. Before coming, you know, you had ideas, you know, presumptions that you wouldn't be able to work while you're here. Maybe it's either to do internet speed, maybe it's got to do with, you know, electricity, light going off and so on. Yeah. And I found my experience to be really, really great being here because, mm -hmm. first of all, Afrisal Orange have really great internet speed. Like, you know, it's very fast. You can download every single software that you download, whether it's in the UK or the US. You can still, you know, have communication with your friends and family through Zoom and so on. So for me, that's been a great plus as well. And also I found so many different places in Southern that you can work. Like I like going to the Swiss hotel with my laptop doing work there. I sometimes go to the hub as well. And there's other multiple places where you can go to and do work. And I tend to do that with my friends, you know, we meet up and we, while we're doing work guys, we'll be having maybe, you know, a cocktail or two, which is nice. Yeah, it's really nice. A cocktail or two while you're doing work, remote work and actually doing work here is so possible. So I definitely encourage anybody who's out there who has a job that allows them to travel to do it. And if you're looking for somewhere to do it, Sam is the best place to do it. I find Joe's comments quite relatable. Mm -hmm. Like just the pace at which things work is, I would say, a lot more slower than what I'm, I was used to back home in India. But having said that, again, to your second point, there is just a lot of potential here. Yes. And I think just given, if you're thinking of the potential and the access to opportunities, there isn't a lot of access to opportunities. Having said that, mm -hmm. the potential though is a lot. So I guess every time I think about like work, there is a significant amount of time and significant amount of percentage I spend thinking about just like capacity building and the potential. This looks These like sweet really potatoes. Nice. Yeah. Oh, spicy Ooh, potatoes. Spicy. Sweet. Spicy, spicy sweet, potato sweet potato chips. Potatoes. Okay. Oh, so they're not potato chips. They're sweet potato chips. Right. I've never tried spicy potato chips. Very good. That is really good. Mm. I like it. 
Mm-hmm. Mm. And are you done with the jello fries? Mm, I'm done with that. You, you can have the rest. Oh, because I will. This is I really will. good. And the crunch is just perfect and you literally taste no oil. No oil. Remedy and butter mango is where we got the jello fries, the sour sour, um, and the fufu from. And, and we'll put all that in the description. Yeah. Yeah, we'll make sure that you guys so know delicious. where to find it. Recommend, recommend, recommend. What are some of the things that you really like about being in Salo? Like in comparison to, you know, where we're from? Oh my God. Sorry. You have an answer. Yeah, go ahead, go for Tracy. It. Go for it. The access to these pristine beaches. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my God. You could literally like leave on a Friday evening mm. and then spend the entire weekend on these beaches yeah. and then come back. And, and what's your say, favorite beach? I have to say Bure. Right. Mm. Yeah, in fact, I just came back from Bure earlier today. Mm. I, I really like Bure. Mm. Yes. You could surf, you could swim, you could just relax, go yeah. with your book, have good food. I really like. I'm yet to visit Bora Beach, but I'm I'm I've the biggest yet. fan oh of number God. two beach. So for yeah. me, I think that I was always like always on the go, always on the go, always on the go, and I never took time to like take a look at nature and really look at the world around me. And it's also harder to do in New York and even in LA, right? Because these are cities that are like concrete jungle. But with Sierra Leone, you're closer to nature, as you mentioned, the beaches. We have seven beaches here. And then there's trees and mountains and, you know, easily you can get to nature. And so for me, I think that's probably the biggest thing is those two things. Mm. One thing that I really like about Salo that I feel like it's an experience I don't get anywhere else is the community. Mm. Like, people are so nice and kind here in Sierra Leone. Like, you never are in a mist of loneliness mm. or feeling... You can't feel down for a long time in Sierra Leone. Because the moment you leave your house, your head is down. Some random person is bound to come to your face. Like, literally to your face and say, Eh, me pare now it's happy. Which basically means, my friend, are you okay? What's going on? And they will talk to you until your mood changes. I love, love, love going on the keke. And the reason why I love going on a KK is because you're bound to sit next to somebody who's going to tell you about their life story. They're going to make you laugh. And no matter what mood you're in, you come out of it. And that's what I absolutely love about Saloon. There's a, there's a richness of community I don't feel in anywhere else. The togetherness how caring people are, how helpful they are. Like I, I remember one time I, I went shopping, I was holding a few things and someone just came up to me and said, you know what, I help you. And the person really helped me until I got into my cake head and they didn't ask for nothing. And for you, it's a bit more different because you're like yeah. from India and then this is Sierra Leone. And like, yeah, that's, that's, that's a hard decision to make. Yeah, I haven't even like started thinking in that direction because yeah. I'm just not done with Sierra Leone. Yeah, I'm just getting started in fact, mm -hmm. so. Yes. Yes. 100%. <laughs> but like coming here, what, what were like some of the assumptions that you guys had like before you came? Yeah, I wouldn't say the poorest in the world, but it, it's definitely ranked. Of, yeah. yeah, it's one ranked of, there for sure. One of the poorest guys. Right. And I would say, and, and that's also based on Western style look at GDP, right? Because yeah, when yeah. you look at natural resources, right, we are, yeah. us and the rest of the continent is probably the richest continent, right? And it's been proven in so many occasions. Yeah. It's just at this point in time, we don't necessarily make all the money off of our own natural resources. It's a whole nother conversation and a whole nother video. But for sure, we're the richest in terms of our natural resources. I had a pretty good idea of what to expect. Both my parents were born and raised here and so, you know, they were part of the group of people that fled to, to go to the United States to look for a better life. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing is they both plan, one is currently here, the other one plans to move back here in their retirement because they realized this is a better lifestyle for them, mm -hmm. but they went there to try to, to figure out a, a way to make a living and a, a better place for their children. But so one of the assumptions I had, and it's pretty much true, is based on the way they lived, right? There are some people who bathe in a river, or wash their clothes in a river, right? But that's not everyone, right? So you understand that that is the case that it is that's, that's here. That's how they grew up. And so yeah. those are kinds of the things that they told us about. You know, just based on what you see on TV. The first time I came back was in 2009 as an adult. Mm -hmm. So that's post Civil War, right? So all I had was the images of what happened during the Civil War. And then seeing Africa the way it's shown in the West, right? You see huts or grass houses, <laughs> which do exist, but that's not the majority of how exactly. people, how yeah. the houses are built, right? Yeah. That was probably the biggest surprise was like coming here and seeing the Radisson Blue, Atlantic Lomley, Pearl exactly. Hotel, things that were considered maybe four star hotels elsewhere and really like luxury living. Pearl Hotel specifically, that's where I've stayed a number of times. And those are like luxury apartments you would find in like Manhattan, Brooklyn, LA, 
San Francisco, right? Like these places that you don't expect to see here, but the same quality of life. So that was probably my biggest misconception was that there wasn't that that level of luxury living available. Mm -hmm. And it absolutely is. I feel like for me, to be very honest, like I mentioned earlier, I came in not knowing what to expect. I also feel like the, the most sort of mainstream perspective that I had was unfortunately through the movie Blood Diamond. Mm. And I don't think that is a good reference at all, you guys. Period. Oh my god. But it's a good movie though. It's, it's a, a good great movie. movie. Yeah. But if you're moving to Sierra Leone, like that's not what you should be referencing. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> sure. Not. It's actually pretty good. Ooh. I like it. I don't know how to describe so flavor, but it's good. I don't know how you would describe the flavor. It's got this. ginger. There you go. It's got ginger. I taste some nutmeg a little bit. You have a very discerning taste. I do. Oh I'm, my god! Because I'm a foodie. I love food. All right, guys. So Tracy's trying the sour sour with, with plain white rice. Plain white rice. So which yeah, is fufu. I have to agree. Is one of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. Because end of the day, you know what the the thing with fufu soup is? You can have it with rice as well. Yeah. And it still tastes as good as well. So there's a lot of places to go on hikes. Mamba Falls is a place that I, I really like that hike. It's a little bit of a workout, but also it's a great view. Sugarloaf, that one's a little scarier. Oh, yeah, you know? Good. Yeah, good. that one is a little scarier. I mean, if you're adventurous and you have shoes with good traction on them, by all means, go for it. I did it once. I'm one and done on that. I'm not doing Sugarloaf again. <laughs> that's, I'm, I'm good on that. But like, yeah, there's the chimpanzee sanctuary that's nearby. There's all the beaches that we've already mentioned. Mm. There's a basketball court on the beach which is very new which i think is Ooh, really cool that is so cool yeah and, and then there's the nightlife right warehouse papa class lagunda which has scarlet. scarlets right i mean these are all places that these are like staples that people like to go to yeah. and things come and go as like in any other city but there's a lot of interesting things to do in terms of nightlife and what would yeah. you say are some of the no 100 percent. i think one of the things uh, assumptions that i had coming to saturday was that there was no attractions there's nothing to do much mm. i remember when i first came i came with my you know i was quite young so my mom didn't let us out or nothing so i wasn't even aware there was a scholar or there was all of these places you can go and visit yeah. now that i've come as an adult and i'm you know i'm networking with people like you i've met new people i'm trying different things i'm like there is so much to do in saloon guys it's yeah. absolutely absolutely amazing like you literally if you're not careful you can end up going out every single day and running out of money because there's so much to do honestly what whatever it is you like to whether you like to party whether you like to try different adventures whether you want to go to a museum whether you just want to walk around and just be at the beach and do some spa luxury things it's all available in salon and both Joe and I try our hardest to showcase that on our, on our um, YouTube channel. So do check some of our videos if you haven't already. Absolutely. What about you, Tracy? Yeah. What about Zumba? Yes! <laughs> yes! Tracy and I, we took part in Zumba literally two days ago. Yeah. Literally, like it was amazing, wasn't it, right? It was, it was. It was really fun. So yeah, if you like those kind of stuff, it's also you can do it in Australian as well. Like, And also I think like a lot of people, when they go on Google and search Salon and all these things, it's not showcasing the true picture of the country. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, and all I can say to you is do not go on um, Google. If anything, check out YouTube videos. Cause, yeah. You know, because people are showcasing their day to day life. Yeah, and I think specifically our channels will be showing a lot more of that. That's what we saw. There was a gap in the market. People weren't really showing that. And so we'd like to do that. There are other channels that we'll mention as well in the description that you can check out as well if you want to know more about what is available to you here. And then as far as the future of Sierra Leone, I think it's important to talk about that because I think we've had our challenges in the past and we can see that with the diaspora coming back and even with the um, advancement of the locals too, you can see that there are new industries starting, technology is growing. We have not only people from outside of the, the Sierra Leone coming in and, and building businesses, but also people here locally building businesses. Yeah. And Sierra Leoneans who have left and have come back. So they've gotten exactly. broader contacts and seen things in other industries and exactly. other countries that have worked. I'm really excited about where Sierra Leone is going. Even in the time that I've been coming since 2009, I've seen so many changes in the right direction. You know, we're a country that had been colonized by the British. You're starting from, you know, basically 300 to 400 years behind, right? Yeah. Based on that. So it does take a while to come out of that and to grow. I mean, sometimes we have leadership and I'm not saying specific new now but like sometimes you have leadership that that isn't necessarily moving in the direction that you'd like but I'm starting to see that here at least that as we go forward little by little we're making progress and so I'm just excited to see where we go you know I know that we're we're moving in the right direction we may not have been moving at the speed in which we don't like it to move but we're moving in the right direction so to me I think that that's what I'm looking most forward to yeah and I think for me as well I didn't honest I just love to see 
all the millennials who are coming back, all mm. the young people who are starting businesses. Like, come on, we all met each other. Like, we never knew each other at all, mm. and we've all been able to, you know, you know, grow and actually create some form of friendship. And mm. we, we know, we go out to events together, and we have friends who do events and stuff like that. I think what's so beautiful about now, um, in this time, is that people are starting to see the opportunities right there and they're really starting to see that okay it may not have all the things that the western world has but what we have is enough and what we have is amazing and we have to appreciate what we have and i've been here for a couple of months now and honestly i can't imagine myself being anywhere else i, I almost feel like i've been wasting all my time being elsewhere i really do because you know the peace that i get here the, you know, and like i mentioned again community and there's so much development being done already like mm -hmm. everywhere you go houses are being built roads are being um you know done up and so on looking for work it's easy to look for work yeah. here companies are offering remote remote work as well so while you're in australia you can also work for a australian company and also do remote work as well there's so much advancement going on and unfortunately you're not going to see on google you're not going to see on tv you have to be here to experience it and i think that's actually a good thing because that means it's our little secret sure you know it's our little secret we know how amazing this country is and let's keep it away from the, the, the people that will come here and ruin it so mariama where can people find you online you can find me uh, mariama forbes on youtube instagram snapchat twitter everything mariama forbes i'm sure he's gonna have it on the description so go yep. ahead and follow my journey as i reconnect with my roots and showcase my certain experience. <laughs> so thank you both for doing this. Really appreciate it. So if you like this content and you want to see more of it, go ahead and hit the notification bell and uh, subscribe to the channel so that you also get um, every update every time I post a new video. Like and comment, let us know what you think. If you have any questions about the food or you want to know where to find this food, it's all in the description. Um, with that, thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye.